Well, Elizabeth Stewart is from the Overseas Development Institute and she joins us now from our Oxford studio. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. First off, those scenes that we saw from Ghana, how typical are those scenes across the continent? Well, continent-wide, the, the official, I should say, youth unemployment rate, so that's 15 to 24-year-olds who are unemployed, is 13%. Is and that's twice the unemployment rate in the general population. But I should say this is likely to be a significant underestimation. It is very difficult to, to measure the exact number. Firstly, because it doesn't capture, it talks about people being unemployed, it doesn't capture underemployment, which is a significant factor in sub-Saharan Africa. So it may be people working a couple of hours a week, a couple of hours a month even, not earning enough to be able to support themselves, to be able to support their families. Yeah, I was going to... Sorry, carry on. But I was also going to say, uh, what we don't count at the moment, the International Labour Organization doesn't count people who want to work, who are looking for work, bizarrely. They don't count those at the moment. And we estimate the numbers would increase by about tenfold if we, if we, if we took that into consideration. So when we look at those figures, um, I was wondering, you know, what aren't we seeing in those figures? What aren't they showing us? And you've taken us through some of those points. Yeah. Just how badly is the continent doing at the moment? Well, I mean, it, it's doing, there are, there, are peak, there are some areas where it's worse, there are some areas where it's better, obviously, and, and, and governments across the con continent have initiatives in place. But I would want to sound an alarm bell right now, and that's about the question of the youth bulge. So the, uh, the current size of the population of young people in sub-Saharan Africa is set to increase by half by, by 2030. It's going to be around 280 million young people, which is a you know, good proxy for um, people entering the job market, looking for jobs, coming on stream by 2030. Now, this is, this is clearly something that governments are going to need to plan for now, and they don't have adequate policies in place right yet to be able to turn that youth bulge into a demographic dividend in the way that happened in, in Asian countries you know, a couple of decades ago. Well, talking about what governments need to do, you said they don't have adequate policies. What does need to be put in place? I mean, mm. they can't just create industries that cannot be supported. It very much depends on the character of the country, doesn't it? That, what are the first right. steps here? That's, abs that's absolutely right. I mean, quite simply, uh, the formal labour market is not going to be able to absorb that number of new entrants anytime soon, and certainly not by 2030. So um, a, a big piece of research we've just been leading on at ODI is looking at the potential of the informal economy. And, you know, let's face it, of the 400 million jobs in Africa right now, 90% of those are in the informal economy. So instead of only focusing on the sort of economic transformation, formalization, which remains really important, remains the gold standard if you want to find, you know, secure, well-employed, decent work, as we call it. But actually, the reality is that's not the starting point in most countries. So we've looked at what are the policies, how can you, if you can't, bring people to formalization, how do you bring the benefits or some of the benefits of formalization to the informal sector? So how can you increase pay? How can you increase productivity? How can you um, have better working conditions in the informal sector? And we've looked at a variety of policies around the, the continent, around the world, uh, some of them implemented by governments, some of them being implemented by okay. NGOs currently, but could be scaled up, that can really allow people to you know, b bolster their productivity. Elizabeth Stewart, thank you very much for that. Thank you for joining us, uh, joining us there from our Oxford uh, studio.